Let's receive our fresh daily bread from our Heavenly Father right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we believe we receive the living bread from heaven, the incorruptible seed of the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Father, we just believe right now that you give us exactly what you would have us to hear and to um, be nourished by and to grow up on in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. Now let's acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord in my family. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord of all. Today, I hear and receive the Word of God. Today, with His help, I am a doer of the Word and not a hearer only. Today, He opens my ears to hear as to learn. And today, this Word will accomplish in me what it is sent to do and will become flesh in me in Jesus' name. And He makes me of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. So, going back to um, Mark chapter 4, these are they that are sown among thorns, and that's the word of God, sown among thorns, are those who hear the word, but then the cares of this world, the anxieties of the age, the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in to the heart choke the word and in the Amplified says and suffocates it and that word becomes unfruitful. So now we've gone over to Matthew chapter 6 so that we can get rid of the thorns and saints it's by the power of God that as it becomes flesh in us, the word is enabling. In other words, the word gives you the ability to do what it says to do. The power is in the word. So rather than just thinking, oh, I can never stop worrying, I can never stop being anxious. No, take these scriptures and meditate on them and confess them. That's the most important part is to acknowledge them, to speak that truth in your heart. So let's see what we are going to speak. In Matthew 6, he says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor wherewithal you shall be clothed. Well, actually, he said, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat or greater in value than meat and the body than raiment? Then he said, behold, the fowls of the air. Look at intently the birds of the air. They don't sow. They don't reap. They don't gather into barns. They don't work for their food. And he's saying, your heavenly father feeds them. And you don't have to work for your food because your Heavenly Father desires to feed you. So then yesterday, we looked at um, the parable of the two sons, the older son and the younger son. So let's go back there because yesterday after I ministered that, I, I, medit I chewed on that pretty much all day long. There is such revelation in this that needs to break what religion has taught us, the religious strongholds that we have all had from uh, people that would say, you know, we're just serving the Lord or they have the attitude of whatever you're doing, you're just doing it for the Lord. Actually, the Lord did it for us. It's what he did for us that counts, not what we do for him. Jesus went to the cross. Jesus became our sin. 
Jesus became our curse. Jesus forgave us. Jesus became our poverty. Jesus became our sickness and disease. Jesus was afflicted for us so that we could be free. So that's what he did for us. And then he was raised from the dead, the firstborn of many brethren. Well, you are now in the church of the firstborn because when you were born again, you became part of the firstborn. And you know, the firstborn had um, an inheritance that the others didn't get. So let's go back and read this in Luke chapter 15. A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to the father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided to both the younger and the older son his living. And after many days, the younger gathered all together, took his journey into a country and wasted his substance, you know, and he came to himself when he was so hungry that he would eat the husk of the corn that was being fed to the pigs. And he said, is not, he said, my father has servants that are eating. He said, I will say to my father, father, I have sinned against you and against God. He said, make me as one of your hired servants. And so when he got there, so what was his mentality? His mentality was being a servant in his father's house. And of course, we read this, and I just love this part of the story. When the father saw him a ways off, in other words, the father was looking for him, believing for him to come home alive and well. He didn't care if he wasted his substance. He cared about him. And so he ran and kissed him, fell on his neck and kissed him. And when the younger son made his speech, he didn't even acknowledge it. He just told his servant, said, go get the fatted calf, go bring the best robe, put shoes on his feet, put the ring of authority on his hand. And then we read about the older son, which now pay attention to this because I think this may be where the majority of Christians has been, but we don't have to stay there. We when the light entrance of a word gives light, then we walk in the light that we receive. So he said, Now the older son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard the music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what was going on. And he said unto him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And the older son was angry, would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. Now listen to this. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I any of your commandments, and yet you never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this your son came, which hath devoured your living with harlots, you've killed for him the fatted calf. And this is what the father said, son, he called him son, son, you are ever with me and all that I have is thine. It was necessary that we should make merry and be glad for this your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. What was he saying? He was saying, you could have had, you were with me all of this time. He could have had a fatted calf every day. He could have had a party every day. The father said, all that I have is yours. And so 
this is something that you, as well as myself, need to examine ourselves to see, are we enjoying our inheritance? Are we living like servants? Are we living like the heathen? Are we living like we belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Religion has given such a wrong idea to Christianity. This is about the father and his sons. Notice, and as we go through Matthew 6, you will notice how many times Jesus said, your father, which is in heaven. He makes it a point to let us know it's about the father. He didn't say, your master. He didn't say, your Lord. He said, your father. So listen in John. This is in John 20. And Jesus said unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended. Listen to this. To my father. My throat got dry. <coughs> but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, to my God and your God. <coughs> Jesus made it a point to say, I'm going to my father and your father. And this was after the cross. My God and your God. Then in Galatians 4, he says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Daddy, Father. That's the spirit that is in your heart. Daddy, Father. And that's what he wants you to do, is to call on him. God did not want servants. He only wanted a family to bless. How do I know that? Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. And I will bless them that bless you. He was talking to Abram. I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you, and in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. He didn't say, in you, all families of the earth will serve me. He said, in you, all families of the earth will be blessed. And he said that his seed would possess his enemies. The seed he was talking about was Jesus. And the word tells us, and if you are Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. It would be good for each one of us to just speak all day long. I am a daughter of God. I am a son of God. I am God's very own child. And just speak that so that it becomes a part of you so that you know that you can call on Father anytime and ask him for anything and receive it. In Romans chapter 8, verse 15, he says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Daddy, Father. The Spirit itself also bears witness with our spirit, 
that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. You know, I've shared this several times, but what we have inherited by grace, we must receive by faith. And I re I'm reminded of when the children of Israel, the second generation, the next generation, believed and went into the promised land. Even after they were in the promised land and God said he had subdued the land before them, Joshua comes to them and he says, there are yet, I believe it was seven tribes that had not yet received their inheritance. And he said, how long will you be slack to go in and possess that, that I, that God has given to you? It was already theirs, but they had to possess it. Let's go back to the older son. Everything there was his. All he had to do was enjoy it. God is sending us a message, saints. He's saying, possess what is yours. How do we do that? Through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. We simply believe his promises and say, Father, thank you so much that you feed me with the best of the land. Thank you so much that I have an abundance of all things. Thank you so much, Father, that you have made me rich. Father, thank you so much that you have healed my body. Thank you so much, Father, that I have the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Thank you, Father, for my salvation. Thank you, Father. And just thank him continually for what has freely been given to us so that you can enjoy it. Faith confessions create realities. And as you are acknowledging and confessing what belongs to you, then God brings that to pass. The Holy Spirit confirms that word in your life. So both of those sons had a servant mentality. Neither one of them knew the father. And yet the father was generous. He was kind. He was loving. He loved both of the sons, but it was all there for both of them to enjoy. Let's don't be like either one of them. Let's be like the son or daughter that God birthed you for. One who receives everything from his generous hand, the best food, the best clothes, abundant supply of the best of everything. How are we going to do that? We're going to put those words in our mouth and we're going to thank our Heavenly Father in Jesus' name because it's through Jesus that all of these things have been given to us. All the promises of God in Him, in Jesus, are yes and so be it. So take hold of what rightfully belongs to you. You are in the Father's house. You're not outside his house. You're in his house if you're born again. You are in the Father's house. So, and you've got servants at your bid and call. The angels have been sent forth to minister for those who are heirs of salvation. So, speak the truth. Speak the word. Speak the things that you desire. Call them forth in Jesus' name. And thank your Heavenly Father. Receive what has already been given to you. The best, the best food, the best clothes, the best houses, the best automobiles, the best of everything. Enjoy your inheritance. Don't be like either of the two sons. Be like the son. Be like Jesus, the son. He received from his father's hand everything that he desired. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for this rich word. And thank God this word becomes flesh 
in us, and we have a revelation of this in Jesus' name.